Welcome or welcome back. I'm so happy to see you today. My name is Vix and this is my channel Goddess of Gore where I like to talk about horror, thriller, fantasy and sci-fi books. Today I want to tell you about all of the new book releases that caught my eye last month in September because I didn't get round to planning and filming this video in time but better late than never I say. There's so many to tell you about with some amazing books that are just ripe for the spooky season. Let's just get to the good stuff, shall we? As usual, I will go through the books in the order that they came out in the UK. Obviously, the date may be different depending on where you live. Starting with the first of a couple of short story collections this month. Cold, Black and Infinite by Todd Kiesling. This came out on the first. The stories in this are divided into three sections, Cold, Black and Infinite. The cold section has stories that are set in isolated and desolate places, such as a cabin in the woods or an abandoned hospital. The black stories are more psychological, exploring themes of revenge and obsession. And the infinite section has more surreal stories, themes of madness and the nature of existence. This includes a man on a night drive, hears a radio broadcast from his youth and becomes obsessed with finding the DJ. A necromancer tries to bring his dead lover back to life, but something goes terribly wrong obviously. A musician makes a deal with the devil in exchange for fame and fortune but he soon regrets his decision. And a man becomes obsessed with drinking the moon and he will stop at nothing to achieve his goal. A Cozy Mystery, A Fire at the Exhibition by T.E. Kinsey comes out on the 5th. This is the 10th book in the Hardcastle Mystery series that I have just scraped the surface of but I do have the rest of the books waiting for me. As I said at the time this features Lady Hardcastle and her sidekick who reminded me of my very good friend who I lovingly refer to as Joe Wick because just like the male counterparts John she too could kill a man with a pencil. Oh I could tell you some escapades the two of us have had but yes you're right that's a tale for another time. I'm here to talk about a cosy mystery book, not possibly illegal adventures. Set in 1912, Lady Hardcastle and her lady's maid Flo are looking forward to the village's first art exhibition. But the festivities are interrupted by a fire and a theft of a valuable book and painting. To make matters worse, the bicycle race that is taking place on the same day ends in a shocking death. Lady Hardcastle and Flo soon find themselves caught up in a complex mystery involving art theft, murder and a treasure hunt. A haunted house book next with The September House by Carissa Orlando from the 5th of September too. Margaret and her husband Hal could not believe their luck when they were able to purchase the grand Victorian house on Hawthorne Street at an astonishingly affordable price. Yep. Us horror fans would know what was going on there, wouldn't we? They thought they were finally fulfilling their dream of having a home of their own. Little did they know what awaited them within those historic walls. The chilling hauntings that occurred every September. During this terrorising month, the walls seemed to ooze blood and the spirits of past re residents materialised, all gripped by an unspoken terror lurking in the depths of the basement. Margaret, however, was having a none of this. She refused to leave, to abandon her cherished home. She said, oh, <laughs> nay, nay, this is my home. But how? After four years, he could no longer take the relentless supernatural torment and he just up and left, never to be heard of again. His unexplained absence leaves Margaret in a state of anxiety and their daughter Catherine, who knows nothing of the paranormal disturbances, turns up to locate her missing father just as September is rolling around again. As the hauntings get worse and worse with each day, Margaret and Catherine continue to search for Hal, 
but the house is holding a sinister secret that it's going to keep at all costs. Staying on the fifth, I told you there were quite a few, didn't I? Snarl, a novella-sized book by John Bowden. Marlin Staines lives a quiet life full of guilt. Guilt over the death of his twin in the womb and the death of his father when he was young. And now he's the sole carer for his dying mother. Scribbling away his thoughts in notebooks that he fills his trailer's walls with. Words that he longs to share with the rest of the world, but he just can't. Eager to help out his childhood love, Lisa, when she tells him her husband is abusing her, the outcome of this favour will have devastating consequences. Now, I can't find out if this is a creature feature or what, but it's got to be called Snarl for a reason, hasn't it? Schrader's Cord 2 came out on the 5th by Scott Lees. This is a paranormal horror book. Remember a few months ago when every month had a new cursed film or TV show? Well, we've moved on from that and it's cursed records now. So in this, Charlie's father has just died and he's back in Seattle to attend the funeral. There he discovers his father's left him two items, the keys to his family record shop and a record case with just four vinyls inside. Legend has it that these four albums can open the land of the dead. Now, hang on a minute. If you're old like me, you'll remember a time before warning labels on music. Reckless, rebellious times, I know. But you might remember a few bands actually being taken to court in murder cases when rumour had it if you played a certain song backwards, the devil would actually speak to you, tell you to kill everyone and you wouldn't get the blame. Do you know how many times me and my brother tried this. The amount of record needles we got through just trying to summon Satan. Jeez, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go and look it up. There were quite a lot of bands involved in these kind of cases, usually involving some idiot white kids family who just couldn't admit that they'd raced a wrong way. I digress, Scott Leeds book, obviously, Charlie and his friends, along with the sister, play the records and all hell break loose. The only person who can help them is Charlie's dad, but there's a timer on getting the gates closed and will they do it on time? Rainbow Filth, a weird horror novella by Tim Mayer is also out. A small cult that believes a rare psychedelic substance can physically transport them into another universe. Told through a series of police interviews with Adam, a member of the cult, who is accused of murdering his girlfriend. Throughout the interviews, Adam recounts how he meets his girlfriend and the group she is involved with, how they experiment with psychedelics, and how they ultimately become involved with a drug that can to higher planes of consciousness. And the last book to come out on the 5th was a horror book set in London in 1883, The Spirit Bears Its Teeth by Andrew Joseph White. Silas is an autistic trans boy who is sent to a finishing school for unruly girls. The school is actually a place where the girls are tortured and experimented on in order to cure them of their ailments. When Silas arrives at the school, he meets a group of other girls who are also fighting to survive. Together, they must uncover the dark secrets of the school and find a way to escape before it's too late. This is said to be a must read for horror fans and anyone who wants to read a story about a trans boy fighting to survive in a world that is destined to destroy him. On the 7th is a re-release of the classic Gilda stories by Joel Gomez, now labelled as a vintage classic because the 90s is vintage now. But this deserves some extra love in any shape or form and if you're taking part in Black Halloween and fancy a classic black sapphic vampire book, Jewel has got you covered. This tells the tale of Gilda over a few hundred years from her beginnings as an escaped black slave being taken in by a vampire family to the hopping in and out of black movements through time. In the process, she finds friendships and love and slowly starts to build 
a kind of family. It's all about being black and gay in America, about blood and the importance of home. And quite a lot of books also came out on the 12th. And the first one is The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin, a horror thriller. Sarah Slade, a social media influencer who buys a notorious murder house to renovate and flip. Sarah is hoping that the project will give her new content for her blog and help her to distract herself from her failing marriage. However, Sarah soon realises that there is something very wrong with the house. She hears strange noises at night and catches glimpses of a mysterious figure moving around in the shadows. Sarah begins to suspect that the house might be haunted and she soon finds herself in a fight for her life. And I'm hoping that Sarah is recording the whole thing for her subscribers. Anna Smith Spark has a new grimdark fantasy that came out on the 12th, A Sword of Bronze and Ashes, described as folk horror, Celtic, Welsh, high fantasy. Intriguing. What's it about? Well, I'll tell you. This is a story of a woman, a great warrior who once lived in the most glorious of mythical realms, a woman who became lost when evil arrived in her world. And it is the story of a woman who decided to become a mother and a farmer's wife. This is about Kandra, wife and mother to her daughters. She finds joy in the simple things she chose, from milking cows to braiding hair. But there's something watching her in the woods, something from her past that threatens to destroy the quiet and destroy her family. Who are these evil things in the woods and why do they want Kandra? The new Clay McLeod Chapman came out on the 12th, What Kind of Mother? A gothic horror offering by him this time. Maddie and her teenage daughter return to her hometown after her husband dies in a car accident. She sets up a palm reading business at a local farmer's market where she meets Henry McCabe, a reclusive fisherman whose infant son Skylar went missing five years ago. Maddie gives Henry a palm reading and she is haunted by disturbing visions that suggest Skylar is still alive. Maddie and Henry begin to investigate Skylar's disappearance and they soon discover that their town is hiding a dark secret. The town is cursed by something known only as the mother, who demands sacrifices in order to keep the town safe. Maddie and Henry must race against time to save Skylar before he is lost forever. Hemlock Island by Kelly Armstrong, another horror, came out on the 12th too, about a group of people who are trapped on a remote island with a malevolent force that hunts them down. So, Lainey is renting out her vacation home on Hemlock Island to strangers in order to make ends meet. One day, Lainey receives a call from her ex-husband, Kit, telling her that he and their friends have arrived at the island and have found blood and claw marks all over the guest room. So Lainey and her niece, Madison, travel to the island to look for themselves. When they get there, they discover that Kit and his friends are all behaving rather strangely and when the boat they use to get to the island disappears they are all now trapped there mm. they are not alone though because there's something else on the island with them mm. monstrous by jessica lewis came out on the 12th a ya horror said to be for fans of supernatural <laughs> you know I am, and Lovecraft County. Lativia Johnson is sent to spend the summer with her aunt in the small town of Sanctum, Alabama. Latavia quickly gets the feeling that something is wrong with this town. The people are secretive and superstitious, and they seem to be hiding. One night, Latavia is attacked by a group and taken into the woods. She is just about to be sacrificed when she makes a deal, a swapperoo. She will sacrifice the townspeople in exchange for her freedom and revenge. Eh, eh, eh. She gets caught in a dangerous game, so she has to use her brain and outwit the town folk and the creature both all while trying to protect herself. Also out on the 12th, look, I told you they all came out on the 12th. 
Nails and Eyes by Kaori Fujino, a little horror novella that is a translated dark and disturbing story about a young girl who loses her mother and is then left in the care of her father's new lover, a woman who is both indifferent and cruel to her, told from the perspective of the young girl who is never named. She is a lonely and isolated child and she quickly comes to fear and mistrust her new stepmother. The woman seems to take pleasure in tormenting the girl, both physically and psychologically. The father's blind to the cruelty, so as a result the girl is forced to endure her stepmother's abuse without any hope of relief. This is a psychological horror that comes with a whole bunch of trigger warnings, so reader beware. The last book for the 12th is No Child of Mine by Nichelle Geralds a horror mystery about a young woman who is haunted by a curse that has plagued her family for generations. Essie has defined herself by her career and she never imagined herself as a mother, but when she finds out she is pregnant, she is surprised to find herself loving her unborn child fiercely. However, as the pregnancy progresses, she begins to experience strange and disturbing things. The house starts to whisper to her and she has terrifying visions. She is cursed, a curse that has haunted her family for generations, leaving a string of fatherless daughters in its wake. Essie must fight to protect herself, but the curse is powerful and it will not give up without a fight. A new children's book that is said to be as magical as Narnia and as epic as his dark materials, The Middle Grade Impossible Creatures by Catherine Rundle. This came out on the 14th. Christopher has to stay with his grandfather when his dad has to go away for work. In the middle of nowhere, Scotland, he's got no phone signal, there's no other kids to play with. Christopher thinks he will go out of his mind until he takes his dog for a walk one day and everything changes. Mythical creatures and magical entrances to another world. Christopher will take an epic journey with a new friend in a race to stop the destruction of this mythical land as the veil between his world and theirs is becoming thin. The second short story collection on this list, The Horror Never Whistle at Night, comes out on the 19th. This anthology of indigenous horror fiction is edited by Shane Hawke and features a variety of indigenous authors. The stories range from traditional ghost stories to more contemporary tales of horror. Some are set in the past while some are set in the present, but all of the stories are grounded in culture and mythology. It includes stories by Brandy Nelani McDougall, Sylvia Marino Garcia, Stephen Graham Jones, and Victor Laval. Also on the 19th came a horror by Adam Pottle called Apparitions about an unnamed deaf narrator who is haunted by ghosts. The story is told in a non-linear way, jumping back and forth in time to explore different periods of the narrator's life. So, the narrator gets his first introduction to ghosts as a child. The ghosts are initially frightening, but the narrator eventually comes to accept them as part of his life. However, as the narrator gets older, the ghosts become more and more threatening. The narrator struggles to deal with the ghosts on his own and he eventually turns to a priest who has to exorcise some of them. A folk horror by Alex Grecian also came out on the 19th. Red Rabbit is a supernatural horror novel set in the Wild West. It follows a ragtag posse of misfits as they hunt down a witch. The story opens with Sadie accused of witchcraft and on the run. A bounty is placed on her head and these bounty hunters get together to track her down. The posse includes old Tom, a bona fide witch hunter, his mute ward rabbit, two vagabond cowboys and a recently widowed school teacher. Travelling cross country they meet demons, ghosts and cannibals. 
They also begin to question whether Sadie is actually a witch or if she's simply a victim of circumstance. Another folky fantasy horror offering with Darkwood's Deep Water by Eleanor Donato, set in a Slavic inspired world where magic and superstition are still alive. Three strangers who are drawn together by a mysterious castle in the dark woods. Alicia, a young noblewoman fleeing an unwanted marriage. Branko, a warrior prince on a deadly mission. And Ida is a resourceful rogue caught up in a botched heist. When they arrive at the castle, they find that it is inhibited by a dark force. The castle is a trap and the three strangers must join forces to escape before it is too late. John Scalzi's hilarious starter villain came out on the 21st, a supervillain story with a twist. Imagine the lair of Buddy from The Incredibles film, a secluded tropical island with a hidden underground spy network of grunts. That's exactly what the character in this book inherits from his trillionaire James Bond-style supervillain, Uncle. Get your death rays at the ready because I think this book is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, and there's also a talking Tak Sevi lap cat. What more could you possibly want from life? Then another children's book, The Blackform Branch by Ellen Caldicott, a book of dark fae, came out on the 26th. Cassie's older brother Byron has been led astray by a dangerous group, a gang that is far from ordinary. These individuals are the Tilwith Teg, the fair folk creatures who are dark and nefarious and lead humans into the hidden shadowy recesses of the world. Find Him Where You Left Him Dead by Kristen Simmons came out on the 26th, said to be Jumanji but make it Japanese. The book is set in a world where Japanese spirits exist alongside humans. It follows a girl called Mei who is haunted by the ghost of her murdered boyfriend. She must team up with a mysterious yokai boy to find her brother's killer and bring them to justice. Also out on the 26th, The Grimmer by Naban Ruthnam, a YA horror thriller novel about Bish, a 15 year old boy who is struggling to adjust to his life back home after two years at a boarding school. His father has recently returned from a rehab and Bish is still resentful about being sent away. One day, Bish is mistaken for a relative of a local bookseller, Mr. Grimmer, and he's, he's attacked by a weird, pale, decaying man. This attack draws Bish into a world of the occult where witches live in television sets and undead creatures that can burn with a touch. So Bish must work with Mr. Grimmer and the mysterious Gisela to stop an interdimensional invasion that would destroy their peaceful town. It has been compared to shows like Stranger Things. The final book from the 26th is the funny fantasy The Undetectables by Courtney Smith. This could be a book for the occult detective October readathon if you are taking part. It is a detective agency run by three witches and a ghost in a cat costume but apparently we're not supposed to ask any questions about the costume though. The story follows the agency as they are hired to investigate a series of murders that are being committed by a mysterious killer known only as the Whistler. The Whistler uses a magical hypnotic whistle to cause his victims to chew off their own tongues. Yummy. They must use their combined skills and talents to solve the case and stop the Whistler before he strikes again. However, with their only case so far being left unsolved and with the ghost of their first case still haunting them, the undetectables are having a rough time. A brand new horror fantasy by Chuck Wendig came out on the 28th, Black River Orchard. This tells the story of a small town of Harrow, which is transformed when seven strange trees begin bearing magical apples. Oh, magical apples. Hmm. Okay. Apples that give whoever eats them heightened strength and vitality. But there is a catch. The more apples you eat, the more apples you need and the darker your desires become. As the townsfolk become increasingly obsessed with the apples, the town begins to spiral out of control. It is bedlam on the streets. Crimes are increasing, relationships are deteriorating and the people are becoming more and more violent. 
A stranger arrives in town warning the residents about the dangers of the apples, but they are too blinded by their own desires to listen. This sounds amazing, something for your dark, cottagey horror folklore vibes. I need this. Okay, so the best cover of the month, in my opinion, goes to Joe Nesbo's The Night House. A dark thriller, possibly horror, maybe? This came out on the 28th about a 14-year-old boy named Richard who was sent to live with his aunt and uncle in a remote town of Ballatine after his parents die in a house fire. Richard is just an outcast as the new kid, so when one of his classmates, Tom, goes missing, everybody is looking at Richard. Richard makes a wild claim that Tom was sucked into a telephone booth by a strange force. But rightly so, no one believes him. Only Karen, a mysterious girl who is also an outsider, believes Richard's story. Together they investigate Tom's disappearance and uncover a dark secret about Valentine. The town is haunted by an entity known as the Night House. Now, as good as the cover is, I have heard a few reviews that don't sound amazing. So, you know, the warning about books and their covers, hmm? just saying. Overcompensating, perhaps, ha, Nesbo. The Hexacologist, A Paranormal Mystery by Josiah Bancroft is the last book to come out on the 28th. And this is a close second for the best cover of the month. But obviously, we don't judge books by their covers, do we? I mean, no, of course not. Anyway, this too could fit the occult detective readathon. This is a fantasy mystery novel about a pair of magical investigators named Isabel and Warren Wilby. The Wilbys are experts in hexes. One day they are approached by a royal secretary and told that the king has a pleading to be baked in a cake. Sounds like the king has got a bit of a kink, but go on. The Wilbys are initially sceptical, but they soon realise that the king is being controlled by a dark magic. Oh, dark magic. The Wilbys must use all of their skills and resources to solve the mystery and save the kingdom, all while coming across dangerous creatures, anti-royalist gangs, ghouls and alchemists. Oh, and a dragon. And then, finally, on the 26th, a bunch of short stories came out as Amazon Originals under the Creature Feature series title by Tremblay, Hendricks, Hill, Baker, Malaman and Mott. I'll describe the collection rather than individually. They can be read in any order too. And they feature a variety of creatures from haunted baby carriages to giant mutant dogs. The books include everything from traditional ghost stories to more contemporary tales of horror. So there is something for everyone. What do you think of this enormous list of books? The timing is exceptional, just in time for Halloween purchases. Have you already read any of these? Tell me all about it. I want to know which I should prioritise. Do you like something spooky for Halloween or do you prefer something cosier? Or oh, is there something else entirely that you would rather spend your time and money on? I want to know everything. Since I didn't give you much content in September, I will leave you with this quote about the month. September is the month of ghosts and shadows when the veil between the worlds is thin. Hmm, that was a short one. Make some good book choices this week, my friends, and I hope to see you all again soon. Until next time, bye-bye.